Eventually, we're going to have to put some shovels in the ground to dig up the raw materials that we're going to need to fuel our electric vehicles. People need to understand that you can't make something out of nothing. People need to understand that chemicals come from rocks and that it's inorganic chemistry. There are going to be trade-offs, but how can you offset what we're doing to the land and also to recognize again that bigger picture. While we're making this transition from an energy system that was based in hydrocarbons like uh, oil and gas, that transition is actually moving towards a fairly mineral intensive future. One which is going to require significant amounts of cobalt, lithium, rare earth elements, nickel, copper, a whole range of different materials that'll make our climate goals happen. Critical minerals are vital to the production of clean energy technologies like electric vehicles, solar panels, and wind turbines. The world is well short of a lot of these minerals. It will need 41 times more nickel, 43 times more lithium, 21 times more cobalt, and although it's not technically considered critical, 28 times more copper than what we have now. That's why today I'm issuing a directive to strengthen our clean energy economy. I'm going to use the Defense Production Act on March 31st, 2022, President Biden invoked the Defense Production Act, allowing him more resources to provide support for the mining of critical minerals on U.S. soil. A fair amount of processing for a lot of these minerals is concentrated in China. When we talk about the production of minerals and the mining of minerals like cobalt, a lot of that happens in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So the concentration present throughout the supply chain introduces immediate concerns around supply chain resiliency, uh, the ability to access sufficient supplies of these minerals, or the risks of those supply chains shutting down. Most of the minerals needed for battery technology reside in the Midwest and Southwest, with Arizona and Nevada topping the list. At the end of the day, mining is land disturbance. You're going to be either digging a big hole or digging underground to retrieve the mineral materials that you're going to need to process into the materials to put into your electric vehicle. It disrupts ecosystems and biodiversity. It can have adverse effects on you know, water use. These things are very energy intensive. We need to think through how we're making sure that the mining of these materials is sustainable in that you know these new mines are producing minerals in a way that you know, respects the environment and respects local communities uh, around the mine site. That the actual process of producing the mineral uh, is low emission and, you know, is safe. With many mines located near tribal land, indigenous people are raising the alarm on the potential impact mining can have on local water supplies and sacred sites. Our climate goals are going to be powered by these minerals and materials, and we need to take seriously the urgency of bringing enough of those mineral supplies online while also making sure that uh, those supplies and those supply chains are sustainable. We aren't just digging for digging's sake. We're trying to make sure that we can solve the climate crisis and also that we can make sure that we can compete in the new economies of the future, which will be electric and which will run on minerals. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.